talk. Can everybody please get seated? Okay, so this talk is about um, the state of the art in decrypting the GSM encryption, which is called A5. Um, some of you may have heard a similar talk on a past conference uh, by other people uh, who said basically the same things. We have the means and we know how to do it. And uh, that said things like, yeah, probably in May 2008, we will have a table, a rainbow table to release so that everybody can decrypt GSM, but somehow this table never got released. Uh, that was the previous project uh, run by THC, and that kind of petered out. So there were basically clear signs of interference from the government um, that may or may not be have caused the uh, non-releasing of the table. The fact is um, they, THC, tried to centralize the pros, approach, basically calculating the table on a, a cluster of FPGAs and promising to release them, and which created a single point of failure, and that single point of failure failed. The table never got released. So this is basically the next try of getting uh, GSM decryption into public hands to know how it works, to show how insecure it is. Um, and this is what Carsten is going to talk about now. Yeah, good afternoon. Good to be here again. It's my pleasure to bring back this topic once again to a hacker conference and have once again the promise upstanding that in a few months from now we will be able to decrypt GSM traffic. As Frank was pointing out, um, there won't be a single point of failure this time, especially it won't be me. I'm going to give you all today's software and I'm going to ask all of you to use that software to generate some tables that in a few months from now will enable us to decrypt cell phone, voice, and data. OK, let's get going at that. Um, A51, the, the cipher was in GSM, has been broken over and over and over again in the academic domain. Um, it, has been, it has been shown to be statistically weak. It has been shown to be vulnerable to certain pre-computation attacks. It has been um, shown to be, to, to be vulnerable to attacks where you only need a um, short amount of known data, which is exactly where all these attacks break. Usually, you, do, you don't have any amount of known data. So while this cipher has been broken over and over and over again, it hasn't actually ever been publicly broken. We know, however, that it is entirely possible. There's commercial solution um, available only to the, to the intelligence community, from what I understand, that will break A51 for you. Um, and of course, there's the much talked about GSM cracking project um, that did have um, a roadmap of, of releasing tables to the public um, that broke at the very last minute. So, um, we know, however, that, that there is a way of breaking I A51. And um, we just took these bits and pieces and moved them in a more distributed, um, to, towards a more distributed approach, which is what I'm going to share with you today. Um, first off, though, um, GSM is um, a very, very widely distributed um, technology. I would say the most widely distributed mobile technology um, existing so far. So a good chunk of, of the population of, of us is using this right now, which I was surprised by. At least Wikipedia is claiming this number. Um, what we do now, though, is that when we go around the world with our GSM phones, they work pretty much in every country other than in, in Eastern Asia. Um, so we're looking at a technology that a lot of people rely on for mostly privacy, but also data security in the form of authentication code sent through text message. Um, GSM, for that very reason, uh, always had security built into it. 
even before the standard was first implemented, there was already a su suite of um, encryption ciphers and most countries chose to, to implement a reasonably secure cipher from their point of view. Now this is a long time ago and um, nobody would expect an industrial cipher to, to last this long. It has been keeping up pretty well, um, but statistic, st st statistical attacks were always possible. Um, the first ones shortly after this, this cipher was released into the public domain in 94. Now it's 15 years later and we still don't have a proof of this actually being a problem. Um, and due to that fact, more and more applications um, that are security sensitive adopt GSM technology as a security base. I was shocked to see that my current client um, is, is moving from RSA secure ID, hash chain tokens, to sending people text messages whenever they want to log into their secure email account. So people are moving away from reasonably secure, almost provably secure technology to um, a cipher that has been shown insecure 15 years ago. Other financial transaction applications adapting this in banking as well as payment. Um, and so do access control applications. So this is a spreading security technology that everybody seems to be relying on because it was never publicly broken, right? Um, as I was saying earlier, all the academic hacks rely on the fact that, um, that you, know, you know some part of known plain text, as they call it, meaning if you knew the first two seconds of a conversation, you could decode the rest of it. Now, when do you ever have the, the situation that you can record some of a conversation but not the rest and record it in a way that would allow you to compute the, the compressed, condensed version that's going over the air? So this is an assumption that in reality never holds true and especially doesn't hold true in text messages where there isn't enough plain text to begin with. So all of these academic hacks, um, as beautiful as they are mathematically, do not apply to, um, to, to GSM, uh, but rather apply to the A51 cipher used within GSM, but not the way it is being used. Um, further along the road, as computational resources become cheaper and cheaper, um, the, it was shown that you could exhaustively try all possible keys for A51 with sufficient um, computational resources. Of course, if the incentives are high enough, this, this is actually a worry, but um, since we want to show this in kind of a do-it-yourself environment that it's not even secure enough for micropayment, um, this attack might not be of concern. It's certainly still expensive. You need something like a $100,000 cluster to break it within a day. So you can decode one text message per day with that machine. Um, then last year we were promised the rainbow tables, which from, from our point of view, seems the best possible approach, even though it doesn't even exploit any weakness of A51 other than its small key size. Um, and we still think this approach is viable, and we implemented tools to compute these um, rainbow tables again, trying not to be um, intimidated in the same way that the original authors of this idea were. Um, the process, as I imagine it going forward now, um, and most of this has been done already. Um, find an as cheap as possible, as fast as possible engine that can cr crunch through A51 as efficiently as possible. Then use this 